BMW has finally figured it out, a hybrid with nearly no sacrifice. Hi, I'm Mike Perkins from CarGurus, and this is the 2018 BMW 530e iPerformance. With the previous generation of active hybrid BMWs, you were getting a nice boost in performance, but you were going to pay extra for it. And we're not talking a little bit extra, we're talking like eight grand extra with regard to the old hybrid 5 series. But with this 530e, MSRP sits at just $200 above the standard 530i. And with a $4,700 federal tax credit, you know, for now, that means you could walk away with a 5 Series BMW for less than 50 grand, with certain states like California reducing the price by another $1,500 thanks to rebates. Now that should get some attention. So what does the cheapest 5 Series in the BMW stable get you? Quite a lot, actually. It starts with the same twin scroll turbo 2 liter that comes in the standard 530i, but a relaxed version. Here it's detuned to 180 horsepower. Combine that with a 111 horsepower electric motor that's sandwiched between the engine and the ZF 8-speed transmission, and that adds up to a combined 248 horses to match the gasoline version of the engine. Now, I know those numbers don't exactly add up, but calculating combined horses between electric and gasoline, it's, it's tricky business. Regardless, it's the torque that should really interest you. With 184 pound-feet of electric torque immediately available, it then builds to a total of 310, which is 52 more than what you get in the 530i. What that means is that even though the 530e weighs 500 pounds more, it'll still hit 60 miles an hour in the same six seconds in the rear-wheel drive version. And if you go with all-wheel drive, you can shave another two-tenths of a second off that. Sounds pretty good, right? So where's the sacrifice? Well, other than the extra weight and complexity, there really isn't much of one. The trunk size has dropped from 19 to 15 cubic feet so it can fit those batteries, but rear seat room hasn't been compromised at all. The gas tank drops from 18 to 12 gallons, but with the extra hybrid efficiency, the total range is still about 400 miles. Now this is less than the 530i, but the i can't drive in all electric mode either. Now I've seen a lot of reporting showing the E's all electric range as 30 miles, and that is false. EPA and BMW estimates put it at 16 miles before the gasoline engine kicks in, and honestly I have had a hard time replicating that, though I have seen reviewers claiming more than 20. But let's say you live 10 miles from work. You could theoretically charge at home and at your job and go a very long time between stops at the gas station. Combined mileage is rated at 72 MPGe, and once the 9.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery runs out, you're looking at 29 for just the gasoline engine, which is two better than the 530i, and I've actually been doing even better than that, closer to 30. You're not sacrificing drivability either. With the electric motor essentially taking the place of a torque converter, that means that it can utilize the transmission's ratios and shift even when in all-electric mode, making this feel a lot more traditional and car-like than most hybrids out there. And while an extra 500 pounds is never a good thing, I can say that it's hardly noticeable here versus the 530i I tested earlier this year. This is surprisingly nimble for a 4,300 pound car with a 117 inch wheelbase. And the braking isn't even as tragic as you would expect here. I mean, most hybrids get super, super grabby and wooden feeling, and this is only very occasionally grabby, and it's, that's a really refreshing change. As for charging, BMW claims that a standard 240 volt outlet should do the job on a depleted battery in around three hours, and a 
standard 110 volt will do it in about five, although to be honest, I've been taking less time than that. They've even got a wireless charging pad in the, in the works that you would just mount in your driveway or on your garage floor and just drive right over, but that won't be out until next year. Still, they claim the 530E is already set up for it, so we'll see. So you can get a hybrid version of the 5 Series that's just as fast as the gasoline version, but costs less than 50 grand after all the rebates. Okay, but you can also spend a lot more. This one lists for 66,460, which means more than $15,000 of options. Now that includes some features that probably should be just included at this level. The $650 ceramic switches, the $600 soft closed doors, the $300 Apple CarPlay, plus some features that you probably just shouldn't bother paying for at all like the $190 gesture control, which seems to work maybe 30% of the time. Besides, even if it performed just flawlessly, I don't understand how this is any more convenient than this or, or this. How many options do I need for turning down the volume? Frustratingly, BMW doesn't include a lot of the features you'd expect at this level. Want the usual autonomous safety features like adaptive cruise with forward collision warning and auto brake, lane departure and blind spot monitoring with intervention, or a head-up display? You're going to have to add two packages to the tune of $1,700 each. The adaptive suspension and M Sport brakes? That's another $1,650. LED lights? Another $1,000. Hell, the premium package is $2,700 and all you get is a power trunk, wireless charging, Wi-Fi hotspot, keyless entry and ignition, and a one-year series subscription. Now that's all pretty typically BMW, but in a market that has something like the Genesis G80 Sport that I tested last week, that car does most of these things for about $10,000 less. I, I just wonder how long BMW can keep this up. What really bugs me is when you spend the extra money to upgrade the interior with the ceramic switches and the nicer leather and the trim and, and any of that stuff, and then you still encounter pieces like this, which is about as cheap feeling as anything I've encountered while reviewing cars. Now that, that's just unacceptable. But you don't have to spend any of that money. You can walk into your BMW dealership and depending on your state of residence, you could walk away with a 2018 5 Series for $46,000, including delivery. I'm guessing a lot of people looking to trade in their old BMWs are gonna do that very thing next year because honestly, I'm having trouble coming up with a reason why you wouldn't. So keep an eye out. I'm guessing we're about to see a lot more BMW hybrids on the road next year. Hey, thanks for watching. For full details on the 2018 BMW 530e, just click the link in the description. You can head over to cargurus.com and read my full review. And for more video reviews, just subscribe to the channel.